Here I'm going to show you how to use the ifs function for Excel. It's a newer if function that allows you to do away with nesting if statements. It makes life much easier when you have complicated decision making structures within a single cell. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. In this tutorial, I have three examples here, one for food to assign smiley faces, one for grades. This is an often used example, so I will include it here. It shows you how to do it using numbers and ranges. And then the more advanced example down here, which is something perhaps a little bit more useful. So let's go with the basic syntax first and make one to get smiley faces for the food over here. Equals IFS. You can read what it says here, checks whether one or more conditions are met and returns a value corresponding to the first true condition. What does that mean? Basically, we can nest if statements without nesting them. So hit the tab key and we can see that we have two arguments. It only requires two arguments, a test to see if something is true. So let's say to see if this cell has beef in it, the word beef. And then what do you want to do if that cell does have beef in it? That's all that's required, one test. So if we do this equals beef, just like with the regular if statement, then comma, what do we want to do? Let us output a smiley face. So far, it's just like the regular if statement. The difference is that there's no false on the other side of this. So if I do a comma, there's no false right here. It goes to another logical test. And apparently you can have 127 different pairs of logical tests in the value to output if that test evaluates to true. 127 of them. But that's basically impossible to manage. So you're never going to run up against the limit of what you can do here with essentially the nesting type function. And what this is going to do, so right now is check if A2 equals beef and output a smiley face. If it doesn't, then it's going to go to the next test or it'll just end right here. So you can have as many or as few of these as you want, practically speaking, as I just mentioned. But now let's take care of the lamb situation. Lamb is amazing, so we will give it a bigger smiley face. And now let's get to the third condition. So in this example, anything that is not beef or lamb is no good. So we want to give it an unhappy face. And this is where the else comes in. You have to construct your own else here. And you do that just by forcing one of the logical tests to evaluate to true. The easiest way to do that is to simply type true. True is its own little function that outputs or means true. So we just type true, no open and closing parentheses, nothing like that, comma. And now what we want to output for our else? Well, I want to output a little crying face because it's not beef or lamb. So we hit enter, we get a smiley face for the beef, bigger one for the lamb, and not happy here. Maybe that's an angry face, I don't know. Anyway, that's how you do it. So you do a logical test, you make the test just like you would in the if statement. All of that is the same. In the numbers, we'll do a different comparison operator, not just the equal sign. And so you'll see some variations of that. And then you just do what you want to output. Put what you want to output right here. Comma, keep it up. Here's another test. If this test is true, then output this. And once one of these evaluates to true, it's just going to spit the output out and then leave the ifs function. So when the beef evaluates to true and outputs a smiley face, it's never going to continue to the right and output anything else if that's true. That's especially important when we get to numbers. And this true thing, just make sure it's the last argument. So the last logical test should be true in order for that to be an else statement. If you put this in the middle of the ifs function, it's going to stop the second it hits true and just put that output. So that's not going to work. All right, now let's do the numbers. This is an often used example here. So a grading scale equals ifs. We are going to test against this cell right here. And let's say if it's greater than 90, I'd like to output an A. And let's say if it's greater than 80, I'd like to output B. And if it's greater than 70, we can 
output C. And finally, our else statement. Let me show you what happens if you don't have an else, actually. It'll just cause an error. So here we have B, A, and an error. Now, yes, you could surround this with an if error function, but you don't need to do that. Just go to the end. We put our true, comma, F for fail. Now we have our else. The error has become an F. And that's all there is for using the ifs function for these simple examples. Now, these are the examples that you will always see online when someone tries to teach you this, but they're pretty much ridiculously useless because if you know anything, you're going to be using a VLOOKUP for the grades and you're going to have a separate grading table either on another worksheet or somewhere in another range because you probably want to apply that same grading table to lots of grades in different locations. So you're not going to just store it in one cell or you have to change all the cells that have that. So it's a real pain. So this would be a VLOOKUP that you'd use to return the correct value or index match one of the lookup formulas. And so would this up here. Where it's more interesting, in my opinion, is when you want to build something more complex. And you can see that we have, for the first test, all of this, this one big thing. And then we output something if that equals true. And then we have our else. Now, you could have multiple logical tests here. Otherwise, you would just use the regular if function. So assume that you had three or four separate logical tests for this example. So let's go over here and type it from scratch. This will be kind of fun. This would be very hard to do if you didn't know what you were going to make beforehand, by the way. So let's say that I want to make sure that the text in this cell is greater than, how about, 5. Now I want to do another test, and I need to surround the next part in an if error. I probably wouldn't know that until I had finished the next function, which is the find function. And let's say that I want to look for approved in that cell. So not only does the cell have to be have to have more than five characters, it should also have the word approved in it. Now where do I want to search for it? Over here, A12, start number, don't need that. Now, let us make it return true or false, so we'll make a comparison. It has to be greater than zero, comma. Now, what do we want to output if there is an error? False. Now, we close the if error. We close the and. And we get here to the value if true for the ifs function. We type found. Now, we make our else, and that's true for not found. So, it is gnarly. That's the function, copy paste it into your workbook if you want. But really the thing is, how do you build this function? Okay, when we're conceiving a big formula, you first have to think about what do you wanna check? So let's put all of the conditions for which we'd like to check down here. One of them was the length of the cell, the text in the cell. I wanted to make sure that it was so long. So we use the len function, I got that. That returns 16. But now I need to compare it to a number. I need to return a true or a false, and I want to make sure it's longer than 5. So you type a comparison operator, whichever one you want, greater than, less than, greater than, or equal to, less than or equal to, not equal to, or equal to. And actually the only one, quick note to remember, is that that is not equal to, less than and greater than sign. So greater than 5, now we get a true. If it is a less than 5, we get a false. Now the next thing I want to do is to find text. So we will use the find function and I would like to search for approved. Now the whole cell might not say approved, it might be buried within the cell like this here, my text is in front of it. So I can't just check to see if the cell equals approved, I have to see if it's in there. So I'll use the find function for that and this is where I wanna search for it and let's see what happens. We get a number, well that's not true or false. And I'm going to need to be returning a true or a false because I want to make sure that both of these are true. So I'm going to put it in an AND function, which needs a true or a false result in order to work. So since this returns the position of the found text, which is 9, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, the A is 9 characters in, all I have to do is see if it's greater than 0. 
Great! So I'm on my way to making something nice. But now, always remember to test the different possible combinations of output. Let's say that I have no text. Ooh, I got an error. But no error up there, notice. And if I can't find approved, another error. And this is why it's so helpful to break things up like this, to build your formula piece by piece and not the way I did this example in C12. I only did it like that because I knew the formula that I was going to make. So now I see I have to take care of an error. All right, let's go ahead. What can I do for the error? Well, the easiest way to take care of that is an if error function. If error value. So what do I want to do? This. Now, if this causes an error, what do I want to do? Well, I need a true or a false value, so I want to output false. Just like when we typed true a moment ago, that's not text, that's the value, false. So we close that up. And now, instead of an error, we get false. Let us make the cell empty, no error. Now, let us go back and make sure we find the text. Perfect. So far, everything looks good. So we can go ahead and put this guy within an AND function because we have the results that the AND function requires, true or false. Let us complete our AND function right here so that we can just copy and paste it in. So equals AND checks whether all arguments are true, returns true if all arguments are true. Paste that guy in. We'll close them up for now. Hit enter and grab this guy. Okay, paste them in there, hit enter, make sure everything works one last time. Good to go, good to go. Perfecto. Now we can copy this guy, go up to build our ifs function for our logical test, paste it in there. What do we want to output? Found if we found it. And what you can do now is just close this up, hit enter, and then for your next logical test, start building that right here, and the next one, build it right here, and build it right here. And then in pieces, you can copy paste it in here for the next logical test, and keep doing that for as long as you need to do that. And then when you get to the end, output what you want for the else. And we will test it one more time to make sure everything's okay. Not found, not found. And what if I just have it like this? Perfect. Now I've made a robust formula. And yes, it looks very complex, but as long as you do everything piecemeal like that, it should be okay. And if you get confused in the future, when you come back to this six months from now, a year from now, just watch my tutorial on how to deconstruct formulas, and that'll teach you exactly how to break this guy up and figure out what's going on. So as you can see, the ifs function is a pretty cool little function. Sadly, it's only available in the newer versions of Excel, but if you can use it and you need to nest a bunch of if statements, it's definitely something to check out. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.